Now, I want to continue sketching out some profile information, but before I do so, I want to point out some very handy navigational tools um, that you'll want to get used to. Now, the first thing, of course, uh, that I use probably most often is the wheel mouse. Now, the wheel mouse allows me to zoom in and zoom out just by rolling the wheel back and forth. Now, AutoCAD users, you're probably going to think that the wheel uh, acts a little bit backwards. I've been using Inventor so much that uh, I feel that AutoCAD is backwards. <laughs> so what you can do is you can go to your Tools, Application Options, and you can change the behavior of that wheel so that it reacts the way that you want it to. The Application Options sections of, of Inventor is where you get to personalize um, how you interact with the application, what types of prompts it gives you, and so forth. There's, there's a great deal of configuration in there. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my uh, first profile. Now you'll notice that I'm, that I'm also doing a pan movement. Now panning is done by holding down the wheel mouse. So if I hold down the wheel mouse and I zoom around a little bit like this, you can see that I'm able to pan. So zooming and panning are all done with the wheel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out um, a couple of lines. I want to complete this profile before I create my first uh, piece of 3D geometry. Now there's a couple ways to access the line command. Uh, as you can imagine, if you look up in the, in the ribbon, I can access the line command. If I right click my mouse, and you're going to see these context menus pop up quite a bit. If I right click my mouse, you're going to see the option for create line. The other option is the hot key. Now that hot key is going to be the L key on your keyboard. And I use a combination of all of those things while I'm modeling. Um, and the more you get used to it, the more you'll, you'll, you'll realize where utilizing one over the other is actually going to save you a bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a line, and I want to draw out some geometry here. And I just, I don't want to draw out just, just any arbitrary length of line at any arbitrary distance. I actually want to sketch out a specific distance at a very specific angle. Now, previously I did that with the rectangle, and I didn't necessarily name those width and height. So what I want to do is I want to take my parameter management just a step further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this arm length equals 18 millimeters. Now you'll notice that all I did was type in the name of the parameter that I want to, that I actually want to be able to reference it as I move forward, and I'll hit the tab key to go on to the next one. Now this is going to be the arm angle equals 52 degrees. And I'll go ahead and tab on through that, hit enter to execute the command, and now the line command is, uh, is still active and still continuing. So I've I've placed a specific distance and an angle, and I also named those parameters in the context of the line command. Now, those types of things in most parametric modelers, uh, and even AutoCAD, um, are done as separate operations. So if you can take advantage of utilizing some of that direct, or the direct input while sketching, um, you'll be able to uh, uh, really uh, increase your productivity when it comes to sketching out uh, these types of profiles. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to draw an arc. Now most people would probably hit the escape key to cancel out the command and call up the arc command. Well there's a unique aspect of the line command inside of Inventor that I want to point out. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's coming quite useful. If I go back to the endpoint of that line and simply left click and hold and drag my mouse in the direction that I want to go, notice that I'm bouncing back and forth between drawing a line and drawing an arc. Now, I'm going to go ahead and continue sketching out, go back to uh, the bottom right corner of my original rectangle, right click my mouse and choose done. That's the profile that I want to sketch out. So, so far I've placed all of my dimensions while I was in the context of drawing uh, geometry. Well, I, I want to change that up a bit and place a specific dimension. So I'll go ahead and call it the dimension command. I'll click on the geometry. Now you'll note that it's picking up a radius. Well, if I want to pick up the diameter, I can simply right click while I'm in the context of placing that ra uh, radius dimension, and I can choose diameter if I, if, if I want to. All well, the dimension that's in my head uh, is actually the radius, so I'll just say three and a half millimeters, and I'll be good to go. Now I'm done sketching out this particular profile. What I want to do is I want to, I want to tell Inventor that I'm done both in the dimension and I'm done sketching. So I can right click my mouse and tell it that I'm done dimensioning. And I can either go up here to the upper right hand corner of my screen and choose to finish the sketch, 
or again, I can right click and you'll notice that it gives me a different context menu. I've always told people if they don't know what to do in Inventor next, simply right click your mouse because there's a really good chance that what you're going to do next is in that menu. We've done a lot of research uh, as to what series of commands do people use and we try to make sure that we give you access to those commands right at the point of focus, which is right at your cursor. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose finish the sketch and you'll notice that it goes into a nice isometric view um, because it's assuming that you're going to create uh, some sort of 3D entity and you'll also note that across the top my ribbon bar automatically updated.